Yeah, I don't think that people who are a threat to women should be around them in those kind of settings. And I guess it's sort of full stop at that, really. Lovely answer. So does this case prove both the lunacy and danger of Sturgeon's gender recognition reform bill? I don't... I, I think it's a stretch to say that, because then we have to consider all of the innumerable other instances that we can imagine in which you don't have violent criminals in the context of the prison estate who, you know, there's loads of other people in society who want to explore, have, have a gender that they might not have been assigned to at birth and to lump them all into the same bracket, I think is disproportionate. OK, um, Jacob, uh, we're already treading into dangerous water with the terminology we're using. I don't think uh, gender is something we're assigned at birth. It's something that is recognised biological uh, inherently in us at birth. But what are your thoughts after you read this story? Well, I just, I just can't help but pull back and just wonder how on earth we got here. And the answer to that question is Nicola Sturgeon and her political allies having a fanatical belief in the uh, almost sacred status of gender self-identification. It is linked to the bill insofar as this bill enshrines uh, the principle of gender self-identification in a way which doesn't take account of other considerations. This flashpoint over, uh, you know, uh, people guilty of appalling sexual violence being put in uh, women's prisons with vulnerable female prisoners is, is but one example um, of what can happen when gender self-identification is considered to be something which trumps all other considerations. But that is it, isn't it? This is Sturgeon prioritising ideology over women's safety. I would certainly agree with that, yes. And I think Sturgeon's response has actually been quite concerning insofar as she said the other day that, um, you know, people that are complaining about this uh, is just a cloak often for transphobia. She even implied racism, kind of dot, 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 um, which I found quite appalling, really. I mean, if you're walking down the street and you see a burning building and you run in to try and help someone, you know, Nicola Sturgeon would wait outside and just say, well, you've never shown any interest in burning buildings before. You know, people are, are seeing this as a crisis situation and they're speaking out, out of concern, of course, for female prisoners, but out of concern for the other flashpoints that might be coming down the road were this bill to become law. And Laurie, on the other side of that argument, Nicola Sturgeon has said that people who criticise her gender laws for the impact they could have on women's rights are using feminism to hide their transphobia. Do you agree with that? I think that the, the tone of the debate has got pretty heated and I wouldn't associate myself with what Nicola Sturgeon is saying necessarily. I think that on these specific issues, we have a, a situation where the Scottish prison service on a case-by-case -case basis has to consider these requests, right? And it is a very difficult thing to do in some cases. In these cases, it doesn't look that difficult. People who are violent towards or threats towards women should not be in, across in a part of the prison estate that mean that they could be a threat there. So I think we really have to be very clear about the extreme cases of people who are violent, who are rapists, who are a threat to certain groups within the prison system, and then the wider picture of people who are not violent criminals, who are peaceable, who are in society and are trans people. And we then have to think about their, the process by which they can properly live their lives as trans people, as the Scottish government agrees should happen, as the British government, the UK government agrees should happen. So we must make sure that we're, we are trying to separate these two things out. I understand why people are concerned because these are obviously such shocking cases. Can they, Jacob, can they be separated out? Because pe gender-critical people like myself have warned about this situation time and time again, and it seems to be repeatedly happening. Um, can we look at this in a case-by-case -case situation? Because the Scottish Government U-turned on the case of Isla Bryson earlier this week, and if Sturgeon is forced to U-turn on this situation as well, should that not mean that the Scottish Gender Reform Bill is just turned out to be, you know, her undoing? Well, I think there's an important point here. <laughs> <clears throat> in, and the one thing I would agree with that Nicola Sturgeon has said is that it is dangerous and potentially inflammatory to assume that there's some intrinsic link between people who uh, apportion to themselves a trans identity and being potential sex offenders. And, that, and were that to, to um, become commonplace, it would be a very dangerous, very dangerous place to be, which one wouldn't want to support. At the same time, I trust, you know, the British public to be able to distinguish between the two issues. And I think there is something... There's, there's another more critical point in this, insofar as if someone's placed on the sex offenders register, for example, they simply have a blanket ban on working among vulnerable people or working with children or whatever it might be. There's no case-by-case -case analysis. There's no 72-hour individual risk assessment by the Scottish Prison Service. Someone on the sex offenders register with a history of repeated offences is not allowed to work in certain situations. It should be a blanket ban. 
Ireland and relying on the Scottish Prison Service to analyse each individual case and decide whether or not to unleash this person into a female prison is just not acceptable. Um, I, I'm with you. And, and Laurie, I'm not suggesting that everyone that is, identifies as trans is a, a sex offender. I'm just suggesting that it's dangerous to put biological males in a, in a prison with biological females. Should there be a middle ground? Should there be uh, prison holding facilities for people who identify as trans? Yeah, I mean, that, that I don't know enough about the, the ins and outs of the Scottish prison estate, right? I, I read earlier on that there's, um, I think it was at one point, there were only 16 trans people in the context of entire Scottish prison estate. So the fact that we could look at these on a case by case basis, I think is apt in the sense that it's got a smaller prison population size. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm then saying that in any way that should normalize people who threat to other people in jails. Absolutely not. You know, go back to my answer to your first question. If people, if a person is a threat to a particular group in the context of prisons, they should not be in a situation where they could manifest that threat. Full stop. Very well said. If there's only 16 people that this affects, I don't know why the Scottish government is spending so much time looking at laws around this area. But a Scottish prison service spokesman said to us, decisions by the SPS as to the most appropriate location to accommodate transgender people are made on an individualised basis, informed by a multidisciplinary assessment of both risk and need. Such decisions seek to protect both the well-being and rights of the individual as well as the welfare and rights of others around them, including staff, in order to achieve an outcome that balances risks and promotes the safety of all. And that is exactly what has happened in this case.